Hi, and welcome back to our discussion. This is a continuation of our discussion on the Winter Night Trilogy, written by Catherine Arden. We hope you enjoy. Um, so then, like, in part three, that's when we first come into Midnight. Yeah. Uh, which is in Dimension, Realm, Time Rift, I don't know, however you want to describe it. Time um, Rift is good. Yeah, I like that. It's not bound by the same time way that... Worlds. Yeah, I mean, it's not... Time is... Time works differently here. Like, you can just basically go to any midnight that there is. Um, what did you guys think of this realm? Do you think it would be scary? Like, the way she's first introduced to it is like, oh, go into this realm, find the oak tree by the lake, and good luck and don't die. Like, what? <laughs> I thought it was like super cool but right like a little scary like what if mm -hmm. what if you fall asleep and then you are like screwed because you're somewhere else or a different time or just like not where you want to be <laughs> like how do you get back there's no map like you just have to like will it sort of like this is where I want to go like okay actually that was sort of the whole cool thing about the magic was like not it wasn't like you made something it was like you imagined that it was always there or like right yeah. like isn't that yeah. how they worded it like right. yeah. like oh, forgot that the reality before you exists like right i want to make fire oh i forgot that there was fire there yeah yeah like fire oh, oh that's so cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i wish that was real <laughs> yeah there was mm -hmm. so much like what cool... if it really was <laughs> There was a lot of cool magic stuff in this book. Mm -hmm. I thought we, I feel like we really started to get a good grasp of kind of like the more magical parts of the, of the world. Yeah. And yeah. I really like, I know like in stories in, well, in a lot of stories with magic, it's kind of like an unwritten rule that your magic needs to have some sort of rule. Like you can't just willy nilly have magic. So I really liked the, the cost to magic in this world was madness. Like, if you mm -hmm. used it too much or too deeply, you had the chance of going mad. And that's a real cost. Like, that's like... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I thought that was a really cool way of doing that. Like, I hadn't... Yeah. yeah. And I thought that made a lot of sense, yeah. too, because, like, you're forgetting things. Like, you're forgetting what is real and what is not to make right. it happen. Yeah. Exactly. And that makes sense that then the that would potentially make yeah, you crazy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. But that's yeah. like a really cool and different way to do magic. Because most is. of the time it's like just, oh, I have magic inside of me. Blah, right. blah, blah, blah. Magic yeah. words. Spiliamus. Something happens. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like you lose energy or like you forget the spell or like, you know, there's something that keeps you from being able to do it but yeah I really liked that one in a way it almost felt like like midnight was sort of the like sort of a, an embodiment of the madness that you could have like you could be stuck in midnight mm -hmm. forever if you yeah. forget I don't know reality if you fall asleep and you're yeah I think yeah and it's dark and I don't know it's just it's so cool I don't know <laughs> It is. Yeah, I I thought it was really creepy, too. Um, creepy, creepy cool. Uh, again, she did something with magic or, like, fantasy that I hadn't seen done before. Like, I've never mm -hmm. heard of being able to travel to different times in, like, a certain time of day. Like, that's yeah. really unique. So I really like yeah. what she did with that. Um, and, yeah, I do think it would be scary as heck. <laughs> I mean, it's always <laughs> night, like, it's, it's always, always midnight, night. and yeah. it's always, like, you know that spirits are real, and there's charity that aren't always, that are kind of, you know, nefarious, or are, uh, mischievous. You never know <laughs> what's gonna happen, like, mm -hmm. and it's somewhere you've never been, and you don't really know the rules. Like, you don't know where you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you don't really like she goes in there and she doesn't even know like how she's supposed to get where she's going. Like no one explained anything to her. Mm -mm. <laughs> Here, good luck. Yeah. Get out of our sight. Right. Yeah. Just, oh, find the oak. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm the oak. See ya. <laughs> what did you guys think about the fact that um, Vivara, I think that's how you say her name, was actually like her aunt? I know! That <laughs> like, freaks me out. What? <laughs> that, I was going to ask you that too. It's like, what? Or, Where did that came out of left? Yeah. I guess it'd be great aunt, right? Because it was her or, grandmother's uh, sister. Oh, yeah. No, it, yes, it was, yes, it was her great aunt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that oh, yeah, and she's cool. like, I don't know how old I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, what? <laughs> Oh, has like, no one noticed anything yet? Sorry. Right? I called you a witch. Right? <laughs> really? <laughs> right? Oh. That was a neat little addition. And, yeah. You know, I just, it is kind of cool that this, this series is about kind of her heritage and finding out where she comes from. And so I thought that was a cool little addition. And I thought it was cool, too, that she, that she didn't have the full-on powers. So, like, she, right. she was kind of like the like the non-magical folk of Harry Potter, what I can't remember what they're called, like a squib. Muggles. She kind of seemed like a squib, like, you know, like she, mm -hmm. she was aware of that whole world, but she couldn't really do anything with it, or at least she chose not to, I guess. I'm not really sure her extent, but anyway, I really liked it <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she was in there. And I thought it was really cool that she ended up being um, Olga's main servant or whatever yeah like, right the, yeah the fact that you know she ended up and, and that olga doesn't even freaking know i know <laughs> right <laughs> it's like why wouldn't you have said something like that? i know i i would think that yeah you would have thought maybe yeah but like it, it made a lot of other things just kind of like kind of snap into place like okay that made it makes sense then like why she's like extra like kind of wary about uh maria like being able to right. see things and stuff and yeah you know. um in i think it's part okay part three um on page 117 we get to meet baba yaga not baby yoda <laughs> 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 she explains that midnight wanted Vas vasia to meet the bear um to see what she would do oh, yeah. um um i think we can Oh, yeah, so I can, I was kind of speculating when I was kind of putting this together that like, oh, like after reading the books, I can see what she might have been thinking that she wanted to see if Vasia would treat him as like pure evil, or if she would see him more as like chaotic neutral or whatever, but she, or good and I guess, bad mixed together. what was that? Yeah, or I said yeah. it was good and bad mixed yeah. together. Right, just to see, yeah. But anyway, that kind of goes into something a little later. But my my question on this part is, she mentioned something about um, taking the easy road. Um, um, she asks Vasia, like, "Do you want to take the easy road?" And um, Vasia says, "No. If I would have done that, um, I wouldn't have left home." And I just I didn't really like that answer. <laughs> But then it made me think, like, what do you think that Baba Yaga meant by an easy road? And do you think that Vasya actually is taking the easy road? Or, and if she is, like, I guess, like, I think the term easy road can go so many different ways. Like, it could mean, like, easy as far as what society is expecting or being okay with, or easy as in, okay, it's easy for me to go this way because this is naturally my inclination. And I feel oh. like Vasya is saying, if, if, this, if I was taking the easy road home, I wouldn't have left home. It's like, no, that would have been a really hard road for you, and you know it. <laughs> like, like, you would have been I, pegged a, a witch. I think that in that sense, I feel like Vasya answered that way because that's what she thought at the time. But I feel like Baba Yaga was actually implicating about later on how about choosing sides because it is as we kind of play out a little bit further from here the charity are like oh we we're looking to see what you did mm -hmm. and i think a lot of that has to do with the easy road just being choose a side you're either mm. with the winter king or you're with the bear whereas the hard road was the world that she ended up taking where she decided that she was going to unite them two and unite 
the people of Rus. Interesting. Yeah, that's a really yeah. good point. Because mm -hmm. I think that was kind of the goal that they wanted to see happen, mm -hmm. but sure. that was definitely the hard road, and they weren't sure she was going to take that road. Why couldn't anyone just say, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, it's still something you have to come to terms with and learn yourself personally before, but someone could at least have said something about, like, well, what do you, why don't you think about things in this term or like why do you think that he's you know like a conversation about yeah they're just like we're just gonna watch and see what you do right, like we, we have an just, idea in our head of what we want yeah exactly we're not gonna right. say anything yeah <laughs> like yeah but but the guy in the bath the spirit in the bathhouse gave her riddles to her future oh that's true but otherwise outside of him it just sort of seemed like they're like well we wanted to see what you do because we thought you might be cool, but uh, you know, if you mess up and like die, right, well, like, that's your fate. We don't exactly. care. It's I like, go on either way. It's like, I think with that yeah. has to do with the fact though that if you tell someone what they're supposed to do to get a certain outcome or whatever, like they're not always it's oh, not as right authentic, that's that's and it's the way as... that they're gonna like probably go the opposite way but yeah. i was even just thinking i wasn't even thinking yeah. in terms of we want you like to characters. do this yeah you know i was thinking more in terms of like telling the reader what's going on no just telling oh. like having a conversation with Nasia about like about what she thinks about good and evil well and it sort of feels like like the fate of all the charity were in her hands so why wouldn't they if they had this knowledge of what should happen, why wouldn't they share that with her? Either they just like really were just like neutral, like oh well, right, like whatever. She happens, doesn't matter. Happens. She's one person. Or were they like she's the chosen one, and but we can't tell her. But like right, and against the rules. <laughs> Maybe, right? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Right? yeah, I guess maybe she did have to come to it on her own. But but I, and I guess I wasn't even thinking in terms of like anyone telling her who she was because I think, yeah, that could just, that just goes downhill because then it would feel like an obligation that like she was no. obliged to them to do this big thing and who knows. But like, yeah, yeah I don't know. I just like a that. conversation I about like, feel like good and evil is something that each well, person not even has just to come to good to... and evil, but but not even a conversation. Like, there's like no conversation yeah. about like <laughs> what they're trying to get around to. Like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought the spirit of the person that does midnight. I can't think of what her name is. Midnight. I thought she. I, okay. <laughs> well, I thought <laughs> she had another name. There is. It's like a punchinuska. <laughs> yeah, or punchin punchinuska. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, midnight. She kind of hinted around. I think to that maybe everything isn't as black and white, good and evil. Oh. And she did. Thing. Okay. Yeah, she yeah. did say something to her, but I think it was after. I think after Vasia actually kind of came to some kind of conclusion of her own, or I, when I she like remember. makes her be her like on her side or whatever, I think she says something about she she mentions something about um yeah about that whole whole bit that you just said. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. the hard road, right? The easy road is just coasting along, doing. The easy what is, thing, whatever is comfortable, whatever keeps you feeling comfortable and safe, and it's sort yeah, of whatever is expected of you. Yeah, it's sort of like, I mean, a lesson for real life. I mean, is there yeah. good and evil? Everyone does something that someone else thinks is mm -hmm. negative, mm -hmm. and there also can be a good person. So it's like nobody's nobody's perfect. It's like, exactly. and so, right, instead of labeling everyone as such and picking sides and taking the easy road, <laughs> we yeah. could all, we could all learn from that. We should all try yeah. and unite and that, understand. That, that, that word, you taking the easy road is, you know, and you can take this however you want, is, you know, is, is staying married because that's what is expected. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, and that's the easiest thing for everyone else 
but you're not happy and you're not true to yourself, but it's the easy road for everyone else. And so I think for her to say the easy road would have been staying home, would have been following society's norm and not being herself and like mm -hmm. conforming to what the women of the day were like. Mm -hmm. Right, it can be easy to just, yeah, check out not or like, yeah, like just be, yeah, be what's expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just yeah. go along with the flow, and and and, and I might not is, personally be easy. Right. Yeah. And then one thing too, I was thinking about is like, like, cause yeah, I mean that just kind of goes to show like the the easy road, and like it it can mean so many different things. <laughs> yeah. And like even yeah. being like comfortable, like. I mean, being comfortable and being happy is an easy road, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad road. That's is true. No. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah. is true, right? Right. <laughs> right. Easy isn't bad, and hard isn't have to be good. Mean that it's good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. One thing that I was thinking about, oh, we got fireworks going. <laughs> what? Same. Oh, just oh, at the really? same time? No, I was just a little oh. bit before. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and now we're yeah. synced. Oh yeah, so on page 131, when Vasia is in midnight and she meets that, um, Mom's a, got a text. <laughs> I heard that. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, what? I thought it was my headphone. I said, first. Mom got a text. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. It was a Facebook notification. No. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah, we haven't heard more of those. <laughs> uh, when she just because you're on your phone, I, not because of, like, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, she, she's. There's a very angry Chirti, and this is at the camp with the silver, um, where that that Chirti is going to flood their camp. Oh yeah, and right, he's right. very angry, and he's threatening to kill the people. And she says she's very like calm, and she says, "Listen to me." Well, maybe not calm, but she's put together. She says, "Listen to me, and be at peace, River King." Um, and it just made me think: Do you find that Vasia is more forgiving and understanding of? like nefarious shirti than she is of seemingly evil men. Mm -hmm. Like yes, but I think it's also because she's had more like positive effects of being that way with them than she has with men. And that was yeah. my part of my second question, which mm -hmm. I'll let you guys like um talk about the whole thing anyway. But um do you think that she would show the same affections if if they didn't become submissive or if she didn't have the power over them like what does her power over them affect like how she treats the churchy yeah. and, and, they, and they. go ahead Miranda no, go for it mom I was gonna say I, I don't think it's that she has power over them I think it's more that the spirits don't treat her as badly as the men have. And that affects her decision on how she reacts to them. And I, I feel like, um, like even, like I don't feel like she tries to like put her power over them, but more that she's, they've been more, not really necessarily submissive, because like even the Rasalka, back in our hometown, still wanted to, like, drag Constantine and into, into the lake or whatever and eat him. <laughs> but, like, she, I feel like yeah. she gets more of a, like, positive response from them on a whole than she does with people in general. And mm -hmm. it might just be that she's had more contact with them than she has with men. Like, man, people, or, like, mm -hmm. in general, like, mm -hmm. She's not like that old, and she's always had a friend in the charity. And like for the most part, as far as we know, like most of her 
people contact has been her family. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they've been friends, but like since she left town, like she's had nothing but like issues. So I feel like she's more, she feels, I I think she just feels like she's been less tricked by them than she has by by men. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's, it'll be interesting because we don't, we don't know yet, like, how, how things are going to go after this yet. Right. Um, Because it is, I mean, this could be a prologue series, really, because we don't know. I mean, you know, who knows what she'll do with it, but we can speculate, like, how things are going to go, where she takes things, and it would just be interesting to see if she enacts more vengeance on seemingly evil men or if she seeks to understand and have empathy and work through work through compassion versus just chaos to get them to to get men to do or mankind to do what is maybe better for history <laughs> I don't know if that made sense at all, but because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. she just, I guess, yeah, I'm just like she has a lot of compassion for for animals and the spirit realm, and yeah, it would just be interesting to see where she carries that on, like beyond just her family. Mm-hmm. Well, with that River King, she in the silver. I mean, it turns out that that guy that she saved is her brother-in-law, but she didn't know that beforehand. So she does have compassion for mankind also. Right, for mankind, yeah. Yeah. But like specifically like evil. (laughs) Evil (laughs) men (laughs) for mankind. We don't really have any like evil women in this, or evil women in this, but that's why I'm saying men. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Good point. Yeah. The evil stepmother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. The misunderstood stepmother. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, yeah. It was, it's just it kind of, what if she had treated them differently? Like, what if she had reached out and, like, had compassion on, on those people? Right. Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. Miranda, you had something on page 235. Yeah, so on page 235, um, there's a quote, the wicked were not supposed to mourn or to regret or to have seen their silent God at last in the steadfastness of another's face, faith. Um, this was Vasia basically having like an inner dialogue with herself after um, Constantine is laying on the ground, basically dying, and the bear is basically mourning him. Um, and I think it's easy to think of the world as black and white and evil and good. And I think Mm -hmm. at this point, Vasia is kind of challenged with the thought that maybe that's not the case. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, the bear is supposed to be the bad guy and Mm -hmm. he's sad that Constantine died. Like, do you think... I don't, I guess it's not really a question, it's more of just a comment. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. kind of shows her developing. Yeah. Like, I don't know, did you guys have, how did you guys feel about that whole scene too? Because then thereafter she essentially just puts a lasso around him and, hey, you're <laughs> mine now. You get, you're, you're bound, like. Mm-hmm. But I think she understood him a little more. Yeah. And I think that helped shape their relationship a little bit. Do you think I mean, that's... I mean, not that she's wise. <laughs> Do you think that's why she's willing to let him go later on? I think so, because she realizes he isn't just all evil. I mean, she lets him go, but with stipulations. So well, yeah. Yeah. It's not like he's free to roam and just do spread chaos forever. 
<laughs> but, um, uh, I, I think that was a real turning point for her to realize that everyone isn't all good and all bad. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Accepting the chaos. <laughs> she definitely did do that, though. Accept the mm -hmm. chaos. Like, she was right there alongside the bear, freaking causing chaos in the, uh, the camps of... So that actually brings me to one question. Um, so now that Vasia has control over the bear and Morazko in a sense, what do you think she would have to do to remain kind of sane or whole? Um, do you, I guess because, um, like if she didn't have one or the other, oh. like, would it be, would it be harder for her to have that balanced mind because when she was with just the bear like she was going like kind of crazy and like hot-headed and loved the chaos and then Morosco kind of brought her back and then so I just like yeah I just kind of see she's kind of in a little delicate area right now but at least I feel like we're kind of left that way with her like she needs almost it feels like she has both of these entities and we kind of leave, I leave reading this series feeling like she almost needs both or something to ground her, um, which yeah. that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just, it just kind of is like, I think, you know. Is this a life lesson on why we're supposed to have friends? <laughs> <laughs> People to keep us grounded and pull us in different directions and get us out of our shell and then also bring us back. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if her great grandmother Baba Yaga um had anyone. Maybe stick not. Maybe that's why she went crazy. Right. Yeah, you gotta have <laughs> gotta stick with your friends. I mean, because she even admits that she she let the madness take over or whatever. Mm -hmm. They that's all right. kind of actually reference the fact that she went mad. So, I mean, maybe, maybe the fact that she's got both of them is exactly what she needs in order, or what any witch needs in order to, like, stay sane, is to... I would probably go the route of Baba Yaga if it was me. I'd feel like trying to maintain, just, it, there's so much struggle <laughs> in, like, trying to maintain that, like, oh, okay, yes, that's true. Oh, but what about this, like, just the back and forth would probably drive, just, it just exhaust me. I'd probably go Baba Yaga route. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be easy to just because, like, oh, exactly. shoot, magic. Like, right. Yeah. Like, I'm going to give in. Like, yeah. cares if, if the world sees me as mad, they did anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, don't you think that, like, the bear and the winter king are both kind of like the duality of people's spirits in themselves? I mean, you've got, like, this good side that really wants to do good and whatever, and then this. So other side of you that loves the chaos and, and maybe doesn't want to always follow the rules and doesn't always want to be good. And so you always have this internal struggle, uh, these two sides of yourself that you're always dealing with. And I think that she kind of came to find a way to blend them and to accept both sides of herself and her personality and her spirit. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just to keep it rolling. Um, yeah. Um, That's an idea. <laughs> was there anything else that you guys wanted to talk to about the book specifically? Because I think all there was, the other questions are um, just about the series in general. Well, I wanted to talk about her brother getting killed. That was so sad. Oh, yeah. It was it like was. noble but sad. It was. And and the fact that she offered him, well, the bear gave her the chance to give her brother his life back. Yeah. And the winter, and the winter king kind of stopped it all. And let her have a conversation with her brother about whether he wanted that or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really yeah. like that she she had learned from her sister that 
Right. Like it's yeah. not up to her. Like she had learned that and she wasn't going to make that choice again. Right. That, that was wasn't really awesome. Choice. Yeah, yeah, I did too. But it was so sad. Yeah, it was really it was. sad. It was. Yeah. And it almost kind of felt like it was a pointless sacrifice too. Like, yeah. He really didn't need to go. Like, I oh, get yeah. the fact of the gotcha. like morale boost. Like, oh, yeah. if he wins, <laughs> morale boost. But at yeah. the same time, it felt like, okay, why does it matter? <laughs> like, yeah, why it does a one-on-one be... -on -one combat winner make or break? The up? only thing I can think of was that it was just maybe it was just really ingrained in that's just how literally how they thought it needed to yeah. go, and like that was the determining factor. Like. That's just what they believed. But yeah, in, in terms of, yeah, like, from a bird's eye view, I definitely agree. It was, yeah. Like, I <laughs> feel like it would have been more useful, like, just out on the battlefield defending Dimitri. Oh, I think what happened was that they just didn't have the numbers. Right. Like, the other, like, the enemies had, like, way fewer people. <laughs> than they did and so to basically make it more of a fair fight that's why they went to the one-on-one -on -one -on -one combat. Right, but they still ended up fighting each other. After, yeah. True, this yeah. is true. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, you're right then it was, yeah, you're right, it was like, like senseless. Yeah, if it ended up being just a one-on-one -on -one combat and like that basically like ended the fight, like that makes sense, but you're right, I guess that is what it was supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that also brings a point, we didn't really talk about like the other guy, the Chublini or whatever. Mm, mm -hmm. Like, he was a big part of the second book and this last book, too. Like, he was mm -hmm. kind of like a main villain, I guess. Like, Yeah. And we will be wrapping up our conversation next week, so please stay tuned. In what situations would the easy road be a less admirable choice? In what situations would it be considered a good choice? Comment with your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next week. We thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like our videos. It shows us that you enjoy what we're doing. Share with others. It brings together and broadens the community of book lovers and free thinkers. Subscribe. It helps support the mission to inspire more readers, encourage free thinking, and sustain the art of conversation. And at 100 subscribers, we're doing a book giveaway. Comment, we want to get to know you. Happy reading, Gallimaufries, and we'll see you very soon in our next video.